This is the men's room. Get it, man, and get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. <laughs> the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and fly high as a tiger. You're listening to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. What did you say? I did not think that that would happen. 844-999-OLA. All right. Hello, Marston. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, bitches. Hola. This is Cheesecake Marston. You guys remember? Cheesecake Marston. Please enlighten us. Bowling by. alley. Cheesecake at the bowling alley. Oh, okay. So, hey, anyway, I got a good one for you guys. All right. Is that Every code? year we go down, the family go down to Mexico on vacation, just past Ensenada. And me and, me and my brothers, we had naturally brought some weed down there. Mexico. <laughs> yeah, bring sand yeah. to the beach next time. <laughs> no, we, we brought yeah. sand so that the, the beaches in Mexico would have some. Right. Oh, uh, yeah. So we head down to the beach, get away from the family to go burn one. And uh, we burn one, and we're looking down the beach. We see this big, huge, bloated seal. This thing must be 800 pounds. It looks like the Goodyear blimp. It's just, it's just bloated there. And so we go down there, you know, and we start throwing rocks at it. <laughs> what do you mean, you know? Why would like, you do that? <laughs> How old were you? 13. All right, okay. Oh, okay. okay. All right, we'll give you a pass. Yeah, Christ, I was thinking man. as an adult. You're right. like, hey, what man. What are you doing? No, this is like 40 years ago. So, okay. yeah. yeah, yeah it's, cool you know, it's cool to throw rocks at seals then. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah, so throwing rocks at this thing, you know, and it's coughing maggots out of its mouth. Ah, oh, oh, man, I get the great idea. I'm going to go jump on this thing. Oh, my God. I didn't think it would blow open, okay? I test it with a foot. It's good. I jump up on it. Oh, man, it's like a trampoline. I'm getting big air, and there's these football-sized oh. maggot balls flying out of its mouth. My brother's <laughs> cracking up. I sunk into my knees. Oh! It open. You thought they smelled bad on the outside. <laughs> Oh, green smoke, dude! It was it was gag. It was instant puke. All right. How and, did you and, even get back into the hotel? How did they even allow you? How back? did you get out of the right. seal well, first? We were yeah. chanting down on the beach. Right after it happened, I jumped out of the thing. <laughs> My legs were on fire from this ooze crap, and I run out in the water, tried to wash it off with sand and. Yeah, my brother's just rolling on the beach, and, and dude, that just, uh, it turned my legs red for like a week. The whole ah. vacation, we were down there, and they stunk like the most rancidous. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they did. Yeah, Dead, bloated animal. That's right. Yeah. yeah Bowling alley cheesecake guy. All right. Fun <laughs> trampoline. I think we're going to remember you as trampoline seal guy from now on. Yeah, that's going to stick, yeah, brother. More so it. than cheesecake <laughs> bowling alley guy. All right. I love it. It's like, it's like a trampoline, man. It's just bouncing on it. You know, maggot balls shooting out of its mouth. Yeah. Everything about that said, stop doing this. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everything about that story said, don't do that next thing you just thought of. It's like, what do you do for a living now? I uh, uh, skydive without a parachute. Right. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out when we ate cheesecake at a pulling alley. We didn't. He did. I'm just, I'm not tracking. When, uh, when did you say, I didn't think that would happen? 844-999-OLA. You think he brought it in or he ordered it at the bowling alley? I'm place? guessing he brought it in, maybe. Uh, I, think, I mean, bowling alley, I feel like they might have a cake. I don't see him having cheesecake. They were wasted and they decided, why not? We'll go get some cheesecake at the bowling alley. And it made absolutely no sense at the time. And it holds up. Okay. Right. So I get sushi at the gas station. Mm -hmm. Well, now, if you call in again, uh, Miles is correct. For us to remember you, I'm the guy that jumped up and down on the dead seal. Right. I will remember that. And shot the maggots out of us. Yeah. <laughs> shooting maggots. Shooting ball, brothers, maggots out. And what out. could go wrong with this? <laughs> Everything about this says, please keep doing this. Hello, Nathan. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So, uh, my story is when I was 17, 16, 17 at the time. Uh, I grew up in like a little hick town, you know how that goes. Well, me and my <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, Ted, you know how that goes. Oh, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, me and my friend were tearing aluminum siding off of a trailer and to sell. And uh, oh, okay, wait, hold on, time out. So you were stealing the aluminum siding off of someone's home, so you're going to take it to a scrapyard? No, no, no. This was like a trailer that he, oh, all right, that okay, his all parents right. owned, and okay. we were ah, okay, tearing okay. It apart. We're not used to that. Anymore. Yeah, we're not. We're used yeah. to coming <laughs> home and our and our house is gone. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, well, the windows were bolted from the outside, so we figured, you know, pop the windows off and then just peel the siding right off. Well, me had the idea of just jumping up on the ceiling and swinging through the window to kick it out. You know, like they do it in the movies all the time. What what can it hurt? You know, no big deal. Well, I come back through the window and 
My friend looks down and he goes, Nathan, oh my God, your leg. And there was this giant gash uh, on my leg with all the way to the bone. And Oh, you mean from the glass on the window that you tried to swing through? Yes. Wow. Yes. How did that happen? I wonder what well, could have cut you. I have no idea. I bet it was the glass <laughs> in the window. Yeah. 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 I have no How about idea. That? Wow. You know, like, oh, they do it in the movies all the time. It ain't going to do nothing. Yeah. 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 That's when, the movies. I mean, you yeah. don't want to mess with a big piece of glass. Yeah, there's they, a couple it, of things. They get like, in your life pretty quick. Getting a bottle over the head. Have you ever punched anyone so hard that when they hit a table, the entire table broke? Because in the movies, like, yeah. not only do they do that, but the dude that you did, cause think about the velocity of the punch where someone has connected with you and driven you through a perfectly sturdy wooden table, but you're such a badass that you just get up yeah. and keep fighting. Yeah. Like when the guy gets shot in the movie and he goes, oh, oh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> God damn it! Oh, my God! It. Oh, my God! It's not like that in they the movies. Shot either. Me. So just in they case you want to know, if you get shot, it's going to be much different the way that it comes out of your mouth. I did read something very interesting, however. They're talking about getting shot in the movie. They said, you know, in the movie, the guy gets shot, tough guy, right? Still finishes his business. He has been shot in the shoulder, right? Always misses the vital stuff. Mm -hmm. Always. He finishes fighting the guys. He gets out of there. He's finally made it to whatever his safe haven is. And now he is there with his future love interest who he has had no interest in before that because that's how every goddamn movie's made. And in spite of getting shot and getting the piss beaten out of you by the 12 guys that you had to deal with to save her life, when she goes and dabs a piece of toilet paper on this bullet wound, now things hurt. Mm -hmm. but, so, right. Ooh. <laughs> and then she's like, but they had sex oh, before that. you big baby. It's like the dude just got shot and beat up 12 guys. Cut him some slack. That's one. <laughs> and of all the times we expressed pain, like, oh, that hurts. That you're not good. You can't look at her and pull the bullet out of your shoulder, but you're cool getting shot. It's like bar fights. Even if you start it, don't worry. Ten random dudes will jump in on your side. Everyone will always jump in. <laughs> yeah. Because they've like, been that's watching. I've been in one bar where I saw a bottle get thrown, and it ended quickly. Well, yeah, it's it's because because it yeah, it's because somebody's heads right, split like, over. Everybody was like, what the hell? Like, security jumped in. Like, <laughs> Why would you do that? Why did you go to that level? I've literally been in one bar brawl, and it just comes out of nowhere. And to a degree, it is just mayhem. Uh, the movies kind of make it look awesome. It's not. Scary. It sucks, It's dude. not like it is in the movie. Because you get hit by... Everyone kind of loses their mind at some point. So you realize, I've gotten punched by like 12 different people. Seven of them were my friends. But in this moment... Everyone has gone crazy. Every punch hurts. And you're looking at one person, you get punched by something else. But no bottles were thrown. And I'm sad to say, the, the one move that I love in any good bar fight, inevitably, during the course of the well, two things. One, our bartender did not pull out the sawed-off shotgun that she should have had under the bar. Of course. Because that's how you truly end it. And no one picked anyone up and threw them into the uh, liquor no, no, shelves. Uh, no where it all stick comes. over the back? We didn't have a pool table. All right. We did not have a pool that's table. A, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a move. But at the end of this fight, as this thing ended, it kind of came down to these two guys. There was a giant guy who was an adversary. He's probably like six seven, maybe 300 pounds, not very fat. And he had laid waste to almost everybody there. And I'll be dead honest, I had done everything I could to avoid having to deal with him. Because I was watching him just, it was like King Kong swatting down mm -hmm. planes, dude. But he was one of the guys that instigated. And I worked with this guy, Carlos. And Carlos was maybe a buck 40, all right? Little skinny dude. I had not really seen him through the course of the fight, but we're out there trying to get this thing corralled. But it comes down to the giant King Kong and 140-pound Carlos. And we're just like, oh, my God. But Carlos is running his mouth to this guy like, man, just get the F out. So, of course, King Kong, was like, what are you going to do about it, little man? And so Carlos squares up, and we're all like, oh, no. King Kong throws a punch, misses. Carlos kind of jumps up in the air, sort of, like, gets level with this guy and just jams his left jab straight oh, in this guy's... Oh, he jumped and punched Okay, him. no, just follow me on this, right? So he punches King Kong square in the face, and he snaps this thing off. And again, it's 140 pounds, okay, hitting this guy. And big guy, much like you said about your tuba flank, uh, playing friend you hit with the mm -hmm. BB, it's just kind of... You see his knees buckling. We're like, you got to be kidding. And this guy collapses like they demoed a building. I mean, it's just yeah. <laughs> crash. And he falls. And we're looking at Carlos. Carlos is like, I'm an amateur boxer. We're like, okay, okay. We did not know that. Knock the scout. The other thing is, Carlos is like, and I have my gun in the back. Like, Why didn't you just grab it, walk out, and say you got... You let, you're telling, gotta, dude, gotta. again, the bar's a disaster. There are people bleeding out of their face. The cops are coming. King Kong's now crumpled on the ground. So, A, Carlos, you could have handled a lot of this for us because 
This guy beat everyone that came his way. One punch, he knocked his ass out. And now you're telling us you had a gun in the back? Mm-hmm. Like, now you're telling us you had a gun. Th- thank you, Carlos. I think the most disturbing thing I've seen is a cue ball to the back. The back or the back to the of the back. Head? This guy, this guy got in a fight. We're at a pool hall. Uh, uh, my buddy who played college baseball, who was a third baseman, oh, which means man. you have a pretty good arm. Yeah, he was down there with his girlfriend. These other guys in the table uh, got into a fight with each other. It spilled out. However, when two of these guys started to get into it, they both had their pool cues in their hand. One of them was swinging around, hit his, hit my buddy's girlfriend. Oh, jeez. Okay, and they weren't involved in anything. Right, right. But the, you know, the, the pool tables are only three or four feet apart. Sure. You know, you got to get out of the way to let people shoot and all that crap. So my buddy loses his goddamn mind. He's he's pretty he's a pretty you know level headed dude at that time anyway. Well, do you hit so, his girlfriend with so, the pool cue? So, I can see that. So there's a couple guys who come over who separate them, and now the owner of the place is he's got the guy by the arm. He says, "Sir, you have to leave. You have to get out of here." And he's walking him out, and Ravi picks up a goddamn pool cue. And keep in mind, he's a third base ball. He, he, he played for. He played professional baseball. All right? All right. He takes his pool cue, man, and he drills this dude in the back like a kidney shot. It was the oh, lower back. Oh, and you just oh, see oh, this guy, oh. and he stops. <laughs> and he yeah. takes this very slow motion knee yeah. down to the ground. And he tries to bend over, and he can't. And he just falls on his side, man. And, I mean, he's just laying there. Like, I mean, it was, it was disturbing to hear the sound of what I believe to be the echo of his lungs. Or maybe the broke. Yeah. Is that like a wet maybe, hollow sound? It's like or? the breaking of ribs oh. followed by like a gong kind of hollow, like, you know, the dong <laughs> sound. <laughs> and I mean, it was just like, I was like, oh my God, dude, you th- you hit him with a, you hit him with a pool cue. Like he threw it at his. Well, like, yeah, that was my, that was my goal. Yeah. Oh man. No, no, he, and then, you know, of course he's right. You know what I mean? But this guy, he's, like, he's <laughs> done. Now he's, you know, like he wants to fight. Like, a okay. kidney shot. I just remember watching a boxing match. God. It was local. One guy's turning up the other guy. This other guy gets in one good shot. We didn't realize there's a kidney shot at first. So he gets in one good shot. They break up. And the guy who got the kidney shot, you see his knees buckle a little. But it's exactly what you said. It's this slow drop to the knee. Yeah. And he just put his hand up like, I'm done. No, 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 like, it just ends everything, right, exactly. man. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah, done, done. done. Uh, what did you say? I didn't think uh, that would happen. We've got your emails on the way. Who sucks less coming up? And Men's Room Rules. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Our question, when did you say, I did not think that would happen? And here come those emails from the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You've got mail. What do you say we jump right into the birthday request, guys? I've been listening to you guys since the beginning and was uh, wondering for my girlfriend's son, Toby, who was 11 today, if he could get a little fit uh, kid fish sandwich and the dirty Germans talking about the science fiction show Doctor Who for his birthday. Keep in mind, Toby is 11 years old. Fish sandwich! Yeah, I do not know much about Doctor Who other than he likes to wear a big scarf and a trench coat. So other than Doctor Who, do not trust an old man who wears a long scarf and nothing but a trench coat. Yeah, stay in school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jones, can you wish Jonah a happy 11th birthday from Dad? Please give him an old-time fish sandwich, a suck-it-up cupcake, and a Leroy Jenkins. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Fish sandwich. So suck-it-up cupcake. Let's do this. Leroy Jenkins. Guys, I'm a simple man. I just want the birthday song and an uh oh lookout, followed by an owl hitting the window and some dirty Germans for my 24th. Thanks, guys, from your longtime listener, Alec. Uh oh, lookout. Yeah, today we will play a new game. It's called Hide the Penis. Yeah, me and you, Alec, have different ideas of simple man. Yeah, you see, there's still full request here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to uh, read this one as it's uh, written. Oh, guys, it is my birthday, and I'll take anybody else is going to do it. So I'm going to make sure it gets done this year. First time submitter, long time listener. Now back to my birthday trip. Like to have the old version of the fish sandwich barbershop quartet and the new version of the fish. I watch Obama Kobe. Sure, make my day rock, guys, from Mark Smith. Oh, yeah, that's my dad's birthday today, too. He's out there listening, and it's all for you to their dad, Charles Smith. Can I get a fish sandwich? Oh, you know I gotta eat right. Oh, brother, can I have a fish sandwich? You put the cheese and the tartar on the side. Drop the beep. Punctua- punctuation not huge in our family. Okay, yes. I was going to ask <laughs> yeah. if that was a cousin. 
Uh, Matola's just wanted to send a shout out to Chelsea, pronounced Chelsea, for her often repeated 25th birthday. She's currently working abroad in China as part of an internship through an MIT grad school program. Uh, essentially, she's wicked smart and working on ruling the world. Could you do her a favor and just talk all over each other about hot blonde nerds? Uh, cheers, guys. That from Parker. No problem with that. You know, it sounds like my new favorite candy. I'll be honest with you right there, man. Hot blonde nerd. Doesn't matter. I can go to perfect. I've always wanted to say that. Oh, it's my uh, it's it's my dad's birthday, and he has always wanted to have one of your birthday shoutouts. I don't know what it's called, but if you please can impl- uh, include him, he would be so happy. His name is Glenn uh, Zoller. Thank you. That from uh, Victoria, his daughter. Yeah, Victoria, we'll do that with your penis is too small. <laughs> Your daughter, man. That's right. Guys, I want to say we listen to you guys every day at work, and you bring a lot of uh, joy to Justin, uh, Ari, Isaac, and I. We love you. Can I get a shout-out to my husband, Justin? Happy 33rd birthday, honey. Love you. Can I get some dirty German talk? Since he is a dirty, dirty boy and should be punished. Have a great day. That from Kayla. Yeah, I understand you're a dirty, dirty boy. For that, we need to wash your mouth out with penis. Yeah, but you're very dirty and you're about to be punished. My advice to you is uh, don't wear chaps tonight. Yeah, but I will bring my chapstick. Yeah, and lock the back door. No, no. Leave it unlocked. <laughs> Hello, Michelle's. It's uh, my uh, guy, Tim's 36th birthday. Can I get a second up cupcake of Leroy Jenkins and a little turtle wax? Thanks, guys. Uh, you rock. Oh, it's Tim's birthday. It's actually his. Uh, that from Tim. Oh. 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 Leroy Jenkins. Sounds just like home. So suck it up, cupcake. He says, hi, guys. It's my Tim's birthday. It's my Tim 36th birthday. He huh? is his own Tim. Yeah, right. He's his like, own man, I mean, Miles. Hi, guys. It's my yeah. Tim. All right, all right. Well, well he said it's yourself. my 35th birthday, and then he put Tim in Tim front of me. Like, I mean, uh, he, could, I don't, he didn't have to put Tim twice. Tim. <laughs> like, it's my. My Tim. Yeah, if you right. just <laughs> like your, like love, love, love your chips, Tim. Like, you could just email us and say, hey, today is my birthday. Can I get a fish sandwich signed, Ted? Right. I want to be like, hey, it's Ted's. Me, yeah. Ted. <laughs> Ola, me, my. Ola, but I'd like to give a happy 39th birthday shout out from Travis to my good buddy, John, pronounced Twinkie. He's the whitest Asian they make and an all around good guy. Uh, if I could get a, your penis is too small and some dirty Germans talking about cream filled Twinkies, that would be awesome. Thanks, guys. And you rock. <laughs> Yeah, tonight for your birthday, it'll be like the TV show How It's Made. You will be the Twinkie, and I will fill you with cream. Yeah, you ever do that thing where you open the tink- Twinkie, and then you just use your little tongue, just kind of lift the cream out? Yeah, three little cream holes on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, also, <laughs> if you're cheap, like I was as a child, you can freeze them and eat them as ice cream. Oh, yeah, he will be frozen tonight. <laughs> you really suck out the cream? I mean, as a child, <laughs> I don't think I ever did ever. <laughs> you ever sucked out the cream? No. I tried, dude. It was yeah. thick. Yeah. I don't like, know. it wasn't like cream. You got it. It was like sugary You got to use your tongue. You got to get it open. All right. Well, you can't just suck it out. Or do you suck it from the bottom? No. Like the well, hole? you know, you just, you break it open. All right. And, God okay. damn it, man. Uh, this is going to look terrible. I know yeah. Ted's doing a hand motion like, dude, please stop. Right. Please, don't, please don't put stop. That, okay. Don't put the don't Twinkie to your mouth. We get it. Guys, we love the show. My boyfriend got me hooked. We listened uh, on our drives home uh, for the past few years. Wondering if you could say happy birthday to my amazing boyfriend, Carl. I'm sure it would make his day. Uh, stay cool and thank you. That from Michelle. How about some uh, Dirty Germans and Aussie Ted, please? Yeah. With a name like Carl, I suspect tonight to be quite hot, Carl. Yeah, Ted here from Melbourne. First of all, who looks at a child and says, I'll name it Carl? (laughs) (laughs) Carl, since it is your birthday, hopefully you get a little damper. (laughs) Yeah. It's pretty harsh on Carl's. (laughs) Hey, you know, it's not my thought. Yeah, who looks at the baby and says, yeah, I'm going to name it Carl. Hey, I saw a coach talking about it, and I was like, he's right. There's a little baby and says, eh, I'll name him Carl. It's like when I knew that little kid, Bob, who's only two, walking around one hand on his junk, the other on the chips. Chris. Right, the chips, man. <laughs> oh, 
Second verse. <laughs> oh, crikey, I love this jam. <laughs> Break it up, Robin. <laughs> September, Australia, it's beautiful. <laughs> but all it is my 45th birthday today. I listen every day, love you all. My son uh, that I have uh, not seen for a year and a half is flying in from North Carolina, so I'm picking him up, and we're going to go straight to a, a baseball game. Uh, it would mean the world to me if you guys could give me some uh, turtle wax and the dirty Germans talking about playing pool. Lived in Germany for three years, and that is where my son was born almost 26 years ago. Thanks, guys, and love you. That from Stacy. <laughs> Yeah, what is that to love about the pool? It has triangles, balls, and holes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't forget about the sticks. Yeah. 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 I also like pool when I put the chalk on there as if I know what I'm doing. Yeah, oddly enough, the tip is blue. <laughs> ah, sometimes purple. Yeah. Hi, right, guys. Here we go. <laughs> Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday! Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you, bitches! Yas and Dirty Germans brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's World Famous Sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm! Schweinefly! Uh, how many do I have? I got uh, two extras here, let's see. Uh, guys, uh, I've listened to your show, uh, as a question here, for uh, years now. Yeah, and, yeah. And I know what, uh, what you guys look like today. Sorry. But uh, I'm wondering what you guys look like when you were younger. Like uh, this, but I'll, with probably wider eyes, less wrinkles, all less the stories, double and more hair. All the stories you guys tell are from when you were uh, younger. Uh, Thrill, I want to see pictures with you hair with hair. Uh, Ted, too. Uh, Miles, I need to see a picture of you in West Virginia. Maybe senior pictures. Thanks, guys. P.S. Uh, Ted, I want to take you on a date. I'll buy you some wings and beer. That from Chelsea. Thanks, Chelsea. Okay. That's a good way to get me I'll out. I'll tell you what, man. I, I am, uh, Chelsea, just so you know, I, my, I'm so good looking when I'm younger. It, it's even hard to send those pictures out. You I, know, it's funny. I've seen a picture of Miles yeah. and he's lying. Yeah, he's uh, uh, sadly, amazing, amazing looking guy. When I think about a picture of me with hair, I think I have to go back to childhood. It's not that hard because I still had a little bit of hair when good we started. Little, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were fighting right a question. good fight. Well, yeah. you weren't fighting a good fight. It's like a battle we knew you were losing, but it's like, hey, man. You could say it, man. That's what Baldy say to each other. We know. fought the good fight. <laughs> Damn Hold right on. did. Hold, Hold on, on for one more day. <laughs> <laughs> Brings me back to Wilson Phillips. Just hold on. That's right. <laughs> and one more. Quit singing that to our scalp. <laughs> right. you can hold on for one, one more year. Day, right. Come on, man. I need to meet a girl. <laughs> you can go bald when I meet someone. <laughs> right? Let me put a ring on it before it goes away. Then she's stuck with it. I don't know tell us. Uh, we were uh, worms in my poop is a subject. I'm not sure Jesus uh, where, where this comes from. Jesus Christ. No, I'm just telling you. I don't, I don't Why know. do you think about, like, worms in my poop? <laughs> Call it says, uh, the men's room. It says, put up the bat signal for the men's room. Right. There's worms in my poop. No, seriously. I mean, this comes out of nowhere. I don't know us. We were eating dinner at Outback Steakhouse. When my brother, who's about 10 at the time, comes back from the bathroom and proudly announces to the entire table, there are, wor there are worms in my poop. <laughs> Everyone in the section could hear him. My mom almost died from embarrassment. While I laughed so hard, I fell out of my chair. Much love. That from the Toyota forklift driver. Again, 10-year-old uh, brother comes back and says, there's worms in my poop. You make I mean, it sound like he's some guy kind of like a, there's worms in the narpoo. That's right. Yeah, 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 cold, right? Eureka! No rules, just right. Also, if he's eating at a restaurant, but they're at, grubs. That, at that point, like that's not on the restaurant. Like, what did not, you feed this boy you know, before he, he came in? But nothing still, to do with, I'm like, nothing you know to do what? With Outback. He's got worms, but he had to announce it at the, at the restaurant. Guess we came out my Outback. Yeah, exactly. Look at that. Oh. There's worms in my Outback. Now what Outback grubs? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. mm, I don't know. Delicious no worms, worms. just right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> What'd you feed the young fella? A blooming onion. All right, let's see. Still a couple drink and tell us where the shot of the day. But first, now the men's room wants to know who sucks less. Yay! Time for who sucks less. Steve and Throw Hill each and every week to bring us uh, three uh, lovely stories from the news. Then people get mad at me. Yeah, all of them uh, suck to uh, to some degree. But it's up to you to determine which of these three stories, in fact, suck the least. Now, if you like the Men's Room on Facebook or you follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live, the debate already underway and who sucks less. Yes, indeed. And uh, today, as we do every week, it's people that really suck. But remember, 
I am not responsible for what these people have chosen to do. I am just the messenger. But I want you to remember, you share a planet with these folks, all right? Just remember, you share a planet with these people. And as we always do, we have three contestants. We have a doctor from Texas. He'll be taking on a woman in Florida. And then the two of them will compete against a man from Arizona. But let's start in Texas with the doctor, where a Houston doctor was sentenced to 10 years probation after being convicted of raping a patient in the hospital bed while she was heavily sedated. So let me repeat this. This guy was convicted of raping a patient in her hospital bed while she was heavily sedated. Ten years probation. So basically, hey, for the next decade, don't do that again. And he says, okay, I sure won't. Well, the 46 year old, he did lose his medical license and his job after he's arrested. But we'll not go behind bars. And the thing is, the assault took place where a 27-year-old victim was being treated for a severe asthma attack. Now, she said she was in and out of consciousness after being sedated when a male doctor came into her room. And according to her, he came to the room, told her that he needed to examine her chest. He then touched her breast and vagina. She knew she was being attacked. She tried to use the bedside call button, tried to get a nurse in the room. It had been disconnected. Oh, he left the room, then came back, repeated his behavior. He came back the third time. That's when he raped her. All right, so that's the story. Everyone believes that this is the story. He was convicted of doing this, and the judge, because it's sexist, gave him 10 years probation. Probation. So I don't know if you want to go with the doctor or the judge in this case. Obviously, the doctor made his decision, but the judge, to me, in this particular instance, is the person in question. Now let's go to Florida, where we know drugs, they kind of become your demon. They begin to speak on your behalf and sometimes make you do really, really bad things. Case in point, a woman in Jacksonville, she was caught on a restaurant surveillance video taking a donation jar. And a donation jar was collecting money for the family of a slain seven-year-old girl who had been shot in a shootout in the parking lot of the strip mall where that restaurant is located. This girl had nothing to do with anything, but as people are wont to do, two idiots get into some kind of argument about something completely irrelevant, and as we like to do, well, then let's just try to kill each other, right? Eh? That's how we resolve conflict. They pull out their guns, as you might uh, have guessed. Neither one has the greatest aim. They fire back and forth. This girl was hit and ended up dying in the goddamn parking lot where this restaurant's located, so this restaurant trying to help the family out and unexpected uh, bills coming their way. They set up a donation jar. Lots of money was pouring in. This woman came in and swiped it. There were only $600 in it with regards to helping the family, but it ended up being $600 cash for this woman. She was caught and she told the cops she stole it so that she, of course, could get her drugs. She was uh, arrested on charges of felony grand theft and misdemeanor possession of drug paraphernalia. Good times. Now, let's go to the fine state of Arizona, where police say that a man drove to Thatcher High School, where a dance was taking place shortly after 11.45 p.m. Friday night. I believe their school has already started. So he told police he was upset about the music, which he says was being played too loudly. He then went inside of the school and confronted the DJ who's spinning the music. And he said, look, man, I, I don't know if to tell you, take it up with the principal. Well, instead of taking it up with the principal, he decided to grab, well, he grabbed the principal by the collar of his shirt. Then the DJ tried to intervene, going, whoa, you know, let's dial it back. That's when he pulled out his gun, started waving it around, and threatened to shoot people if they did not turn down the music. They didn't get the chance to do that because he then went over and started unplugging all the equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They wrestled this guy to the ground. He ended up not firing his gun. They managed to get control of him. He still had his gun in his hand. They couldn't get the gun out of his hand like Charlton Heston, but they at least subdued him to the point he couldn't fire. The cops got there and finally managed to disarm him. As you would imagine, he too was under arrest. But that's what we have today. We have the, Jesus. I don't know if you want to go with the doctor or the judge in this case. The doctor was, in yeah, fact, both. convicted of both. raping the patient, and we have laws in this country to punish you for it. But in Texas, they decided 10 years probation. So, hey, could you not rape any more patients again for 10 years? I've done it for 49. It's not that hard. We also... I mean, we have the woman in Florida that stole the donation jar. That donation jar was to help raise funds for the family of a slain seven-year-old girl. And then we have the guy in Arizona who's threatening to shoot people because the music at the high school dance was too loud. So I think it's easy, whether it's the doctor or the judge, <clears throat> to put them as the worst. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. But then, I mean, the guy in Arizona, man, you just keep, don't take guns into schools. No. And it's a high school. And like I, I don't know. The country where it doesn't matter. 
Yeah. So I mean, you know? I would say, even though she stole it, and that's a horrible thing, that little girl had passed away and the money was for her. Her drugs were speaking on her behalf. Yeah. I'll say she sucks the least because that's a, okay. you know. Alec is saying that the guy on uh, Facebook that uh, pointed a gun at the DJ is easily the least sucky. The doctor should be publicly executed along with every single person involved with that. Uh, Shane says the doctor is a loaded question. We all know he freaking sucks the most, but who sucks even more is the judge. Uh, and, uh, it sounds bad. I'm inclined to agree just in the sense of when people's kids act like a-holes, you know it's not the kid, it's the parents, right? Same. If you're not going to punish people for what they've done, whatever, whatever the severity, but if you're not going to punish them, then you're not doing anything to discourage the behavior. Ryan says Arizona man sucks the least. No question about that. And uh, another Ryan says obviously Arizona. Bath salts run rampant down there, and everyone knows <laughs> don't take a S up with intoxicated me. You want drunk me? Sober me was not there. <laughs> okay. If you want to jump in there on a little Who Sucks Less, uh, like the Men's Room on uh, Facebook, and uh, you can follow us on Twitter, too, at uh, uh, Men's Room Live. Oh, 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 I forgot to do this. Oh, real quick. Uh, we're on Instagram, too, at uh, Men's Room Live, and I told uh, uh, Robin, who's been working very hard on that account, if we got to how many today? 4000 That she would give me $10. <laughs> so, so Robin, you, please, you now go uh, to uh, uh, Men's Room um, at Men's Room Live. And you follow us there on Instagram, and then if we get four thousand, uh, Robin's going to give me ten dollars. Man, that's a deal! Isn't that a hell of a deal? Come on, get what there! A deal! Wow! Yeah, all that, huh? What do you know? Show of the day is coming up. We'll review some men's room rules up next. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitches! You're listening to the Men's Room. Another round of uh, profile is coming up. We will drink and toast with a shot of the day, both first. And now. Men's Room presents Men's Room Rules. Time for uh, Men's Room Rules. You've helped us uh, create all these rules throughout the years, and the list of rules is available at mensroomlive.com. If you'd like to go there and check out all the rules that you've uh, made throughout the years, every once in a while, we'll take a little time and try to put some new rules into uh, law. And a few of these come from our bathroom etiquette section. Uh, Article 1, a few of these just to give you an idea. Uh, don't touch a man while he's already underway. That from the Ted Smith, who made that rule a, a while ago. <laughs> if you must destroy a men's room, keep the fan on when you leave. If there is one. Never shave naked in a gym bathroom. Uh, no Why man. do we have to tell people this? What, these are rules know, that were made for I know. Reason. You just feel like you shouldn't have to tell mm-hmm. people. Uh, before you enter a stall, do a foot check to make sure no one's in there. Uh, from Austin. Uh, while using the urinal, stand close enough that no one else can see your business and splash on people. Well, that sounds awful familiar, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. No two men should use a urinal at the same time. You get the idea. These are all some uh, some helpful tips there. And and, and very entertaining uh, reading, by the way, if you go to mensroomlive.com. So, since we are in the category of uh, the bathroom etiquette, we've got a couple here. It says, guys, I'm, uh, I'm emailing, uh, emailing about to Article 1, Section 38 of bathroom etiquette. Which says no man shall start washing his hands in the uh, same sink as another man. I recently used a sink at a Walmart, and they use uh, the trough-style sink with multiple spouts. Sure. Yeah. Therefore, I am proposing. If a public bathroom has a trough-style sink, a man must use the farthest spout possible away if another man is already washing his hands. So if there's four of these things, you know, just just give them a little room. I mean, look, I don't think you have to. Generally, I will. Because the thing about a bathroom is you're doing your most private of business. That is not sex, right? And everybody just wants their privacy and wants to be left alone. Yeah, but he's just washing his hands. Right, right, right. Like it's the a jump, lot different. His penis is already away. You assume. We assume. Yeah, I assume. I we assume. assume. Uh, followed up by no man shall share a hand dryer with another man. It's a little awkward, and those things are already too weak. I've never even thought about doing that. I don't, do we really need to tell people that? Apparently, look, I've never thought of using the same urinal with someone I've, at the same time. I've never thought of washing my hands in the same sink, non-trough style, the mm-hmm. same. And I certainly have never thought, hey, I'm going to dry my hands in here, too. Like... I guess if we need to pass these, then you go, hell yeah. But I'd like to think this does not cross anyone's mind. No man shall uh, share a hand dryer with another man. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Ask. Okay. That's an easy one. All right, that from Justin. Justin, thank now you. Now I feel yeah. com- I never even thought of doing that, and now I have to be honest with you. Like, mm-hmm. that's all I want to do now. Okay. Make one of our coworkers uncomfortable. Oh, we just have the paper towels. This is Damn. another one. This is unbelievable. This is another one about a sink. Uh, Ola Men's Room. I was shaving at the gym this morning, and another guy showed up to wash his face at a sink close by. Mm-hmm. After he was done, the son of a bitch left the surrounding outside area of the sink absolutely soaked and did not even bother to dry it up with his towel. This is a major D move and absolutely unacceptable. Screw you, sink slob. 
uh, perhaps the rules should read, if a lot of water ends up on or outside the said sink, dry it up and don't leave it all soggy for the next guy. Take care, gents. Sincerely, that from Alex, Fleet Admiral of Thrills Royal Navy. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> aye, yes. <laughs> Passed. If you have a potential rule, just shoot us an email to the men's room at mensroomlive.com. Make the subject men's room rules. All right, Wobbin, and we made it to drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. Awesome. And the men's room knows just who it is. So to you, we say, bottoms up, sailor. Mastakia! You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Stephen Throwhill to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed, and today we toast the fine country of Venezuela. If you've been paying attention to anything outside of the United States, you might know that Venezuela for the last several years, their economy has been plummeting and that is a very very mild interpretation things are absolutely crazy and one of the nuttiest things about this believe it or not venezuela it sits on top of one of the world's greatest oil reserves but they're not making any money on it so the citizens are scrambling etc etc so you think to yourself you know what who would not line up to be on that world famous internationally acclaimed game show who wants to be a millionaire right if you live in venezuela is this not the show you'd want to be on well they ended up canceling the show. And I want you to understand, they didn't cancel the show because they don't have the money. But the Bolivar, which is the currency of Venezuela, has just been devalued. And essentially, it take any denomination of money and take five zeros off of it. And that's its worth. Who wants to be a millionaire now? They said we took it off because it's not worth it. Because it's now the equivalent. If you won the whole thing, $10. So a million of their dollars is now worth $10. $10. No, they canceled the show because they said no one's going to... It's not worth it. It's like what's going to happen to the stock market here in the next few months. <laughs> yep. So we pour this booze and we drink this booze because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola! Let's get a contestant online for Profile This. Call our 9 at 844-999. Hola. Hola! The shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network. 